welcome to Living Hope Online. Uh, we're so pleased you could join us today, especially if you're here on the 10.30 a.m. premiere. Well done. Um, today we continue with our new teaching series called GPS, God's Positioning System. See what we did there. Uh, and I, I wonder how the last few months have been for you. With churches closed and much of life so different right now, I wonder if you may be feeling a little lost, maybe off the map. Well, stay tuned today as Jeremy will be bringing the second instalment of GPS today. And don't forget, straight after the service today, you can join us on Zoom. During lockdown, it's a great connection point um, and it's a space where we can catch up as well as discuss and talk anything about today's service, but also, you know, come bring in your news and your gossip and your prayer requests too. Uh, message us if you'd like to join us on Zoom. Uh, we'll give you the meeting ID and the password. And everyone is welcome. We'd love you to see you there. Well, before we head further into our service today, Lisa is going to bring us a heads up on the rundown for Christmas at Living Hope Church. Hi everyone, it's exactly 40 days until Christmas. Those of you who know me, you will know how much I love Christmas. Yes, I love all the trimmings, but also as well, I love all that Christmas represents, you know, the opportunity to talk about the story of Jesus. Now, I think that this year we have all accepted that Christmas is going to be a little bit different. You know, we're not sure what restrictions might be in place, which can leave us all feeling a little bit weary. So I thought, before I talk about Christmas, let's cue some Christmas music. Great stuff. That is so much better to get us in the mood. Now, we hope that we will be able to gather as a church at least once for a special Christmas service in December, but we will have to let you know on that. Uh, what we do know is that we can do a family Christmas online service on the 20th of December, which is going to include the retelling of the Nativity story from Our Little Stars. We're also creating a virtual online advent calendar on our website. It has 24 squares, you can click on it. And as you click on it, there will be a Christmas devotional by someone in our church for that day. How exciting. We will send you the link for that as soon as it arrives. Now Christmas is a time for giving and generosity. And as we celebrate Jesus who came to this earth, and was the greatest gift of all time. We also remember Jesus came for the least, the lost and the broken. So this Christmas time, we are going to be providing 100 families with two weeks worth of food and groceries that will provide them with a meal for every day of the school Christmas holidays. We are going to pack some extra nice Christmas things in there too, some mince pies, some chocolates, some fun activities for the children to including actually a booklet about the nativity story so we need people to come to our brinley house offices to help on saturday the 19th of december 9 till 11 a.m we have a packing morning and we're going to be packing everything up into bags getting ready for the deliveries um, so then at midday, at 12 o'clock, we need people to drive, go and deliver these parcels to families. So whether you can pack on the morning or drive on the afternoon, we'd love to hear from you. Also as well, we are partnering with the Christmas Lunch Project and nominating these same families for a Christmas turkey hamper too. So on December the 23rd, we need volunteers to deliver turkeys and all the trimmings, and now because of government guidelines with the coronavirus, we need you to book in. If you'd like to volunteer, and if you're interested in doing this, initially we will need you to express your interest to volunteer uh, by emailing revive at livinghopechurch.org.uk. Now alternatively, there is another way you can be generous this Christmas time. You may not be able to serve with your time, but you can um, give financially. We are supporting the work of Chad again this year, but this time we are buying men's gift sets for young men who are in sheltered accommodation this Christmas. So each gift set, it costs five pounds and you can use our usual bank transfer information. Just add in the word gift G-I-F-T in the reference box. 
Brilliant. Well, the month of December, I think you will agree, is looking better and brighter already. I look forward to seeing you soon. Wow, that's great. There's so many brilliant opportunities to give this Christmas time. So we're going to pray now before we head into today's message. As we do that, you can give your tithes and your offerings using the information on screen now. Uh, when given by bank transfer, if you'd like your money to go to the men's Christmas gift set specifically, use the word gift, G-I-F-T, in the reference box. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much that we have the opportunity and the great privilege to serve this town, to give uh, of what we have to those who need it. Um, God, would you give us a generous heart and show us the opportunities that we have to be generous and to give showing your love in the same way that you've given so much to us. God, I pray that you'd open our hearts and our minds now to the words that Jeremy has to say to us. And we pray that by your power, you would change us to make us more like your son, Jesus. For in his name and for his glory, I pray. Amen. Let's go to Jeremy. What a year. Is the light at the end of the tunnel? Is there a vaccine? Is there a way out? Um, those are the questions we're asking this week. There seems a glimmer of hope at long last uh, that we could be coming to the end of this pandemic. But we know we've still got weeks and months, hopefully just months, that lie ahead of us. Uh, if we're honest, it's all very, very easy for any of us to lose our direction in life. And the question is, how can we stay on track? I didn't realise this, but uh, the magnetic north is always on the move. So if, like me, when you're out walking, you're used to using a compass, it not, may not be quite as accurate as sometimes we think it is, because it moves and it changes. But, you know, God has given us a GPS in himself, in his spirit, and more importantly, by his word. He has given us a way of finding our way through the mess, uh, through the trauma, through the tragedy, through the pain, and through the joy that we have in life. There is a way. There is a way when we trust in God, when we look to God for that way uh, to move on. What have 12 months has been for me? Retirement, holidays, COVID. <laughs> You put all that together. And I have to be honest, there are times when I even I felt I've slipped off the map or that my sat nav has lost its signal or my phone has died. Uh, there are times when it has been difficult trying to work our way uh, through where we are uh, today. Even my compass hasn't been quite as accurate as I thought it was. You know, when I'm uh, uh, on a walk, uh, and if you were, were coming with me, you will often hear me say, where are we? And sometimes I'll even say, I think we're lost. Um, now, following on from Lisa last week, uh, when Joy's been walking with me a number of times, actually, through the last 12 months, and uh, I've managed to get us lost, um, she doesn't have any hesitation when we can find somebody in asking the way. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't find it easy to ask the way. I'm willing to give instruction if somebody asks me. Um, but even when Joy's asking the way, I'm watching that person to, I wonder if they really know the way. Uh, because when you follow somebody else, they can lead you even further astray. I had that happen in America where uh, people were very confident, but they was also clueless when they was trying to give me uh, directions. You know, when I go to a new town, and a new place. I, I like to go into the centre of the town and find that map, the 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 the, the town map uh, on the wall, uh, or in the centre on the board in, in the town. And when I find it, I look for the arrow that says "You are here." Um, when I find a map and it doesn't have that sign on, I get really frustrated. I need to know, well, where's my starting point? Where am I starting from? Where am I going from? Uh, that, is my, uh, that is my question. Um, when I was in Appleby uh, earlier uh, this year, and uh, we had a lovely two weeks up there in the Eden Valley, um, and uh, the one day I was walking to my car with my, uh, with my road map. And uh, somebody shouted across to me, he says, that's a rare sight, a man with a map. 
Um, now, I must be honest, I do use a sat nav from time to time, uh, uh, but I have to have a look at my map first. So I've got an idea where I am going uh, before I put the sat nav on. And um, it made me think, I wonder how many people have a map presently in their lives uh, I would describe as a spiritual map to help them uh, find their way. So many people are using unreliable instruments to guide them. Things like their feelings, their cultural whims, other people's expectations, selfish desires and dreams and all sorts of fickle winds that will guide them and direct them. We know if this is the truth, all of our journeys will end in a disastrous shipwreck if we're following the wrong signs. If the instruments we're using are incorrect, we're going to end up in disaster. But I have good news today because we don't have to stay on the boat that's going to end in shipwreck. We can get off because God has intervened. For every one of us, he's intervened on our uh, behalf. So thankfully, by listening to God's voice, especially by reading his Bible and listening to what he's saying through it, he shows us the way. He shows us who we are. He shows us where we belong. He shows us where we need to get to and more importantly he shows us how to get there you see our god actually can show us true north in our lives not magnetic north that fluctuates and moves around for the next few weeks we're looking in hebrews 11 and we're looking at some of the great uh, characters in the bible that were directed by god's gps god's positioning system last week lisa looked at abraham and this week I'm looking at Moses. Uh, by faith, these men find themselves in God's great hall of fame. Uh, Lisa spoke a lot about faith last week when she was talking about Abraham. And there's this great verse in Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says this, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If you're watching this at the moment, then there must be something going on in your heart that means that you're seeking after God. I'm so happy you're joining me on my journey because my journey is still seeking after God. I'm glad that in one sense I found him, but I'm glad also it's still true that I am still finding him. Lisa concentrated on Abraham's faith and how that kept him on track. Now, when we come to Moses, the obvious thing to talk about would be the cloud that led them uh, in the day and the pillar of fire that led them by night. Um, but actually my brief is something different. Moses, Moses' identity was key to him finding God's direction for his life. So I'd like to read from Hebrews 11. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, uh, then you want to look it up. It's starting at verse 23. And this is the heavenly account of what happened uh, in Moses' life. Uh, if you want the earthly account, you read it in Exodus. That gives you all the facts. But the truth gets magnified when we read in Hebrews 11. It says this, by faith. Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. 
Now, I believe from that reading in Hebrews that we've uh, just uh, gone through, um, I can see in the three stages in, 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 uh, in, in Moses' journey that I want to just concentrate on for the next few minutes. Uh, the first stage was how Moses owned up to his identity. Uh, the second stage was how he discovers God's identity. Uh, but the third stage is the time that he spends discovering more of God's identity. And because of that, he's growing into his own identity. So Moses owns up to his identity. He belonged with God's people. Uh, it started right at the beginning where his parents said he was no ordinary child. Well, I, I think all parents would say that about their child. But Moses was special and they recognised it. And uh, Moses grew up and he had a choice. He could stay as a prince in Egypt or he could throw his lot in as an Israelite slave. Which one was it going to be? Well, when Moses was old enough, he made his decision and it was to associate with the Israelite family, to become part of his own uh, people. He chose disgrace instead of treasure, uh, the Bible says. He devalued the material things that was all around him. Now, the facts, remember when I said about Hebrews telling us the truth? Uh, Exodus tells us the facts. And the fact is this, he stands up for the Israelite saves and murders an Egyptian. Because when he was out one day, he was looking at his own people and he saw an Egyptian treating the slaves badly. And he intervened and he ended up murdering this Egyptian. But the next day he saw two Hebrews quarreling with each other and he intervened again. And then it became apparent they knew what he'd done the day before. So now he was a known murderer. And he ran away. So he became a murderer and a fugitive. Things went spectacularly wrong uh, for him at this point in his life. He runs to Midian and he meets a family there. And he meets a girl there. And he gets married there. And he has his own family there. One day as a shepherd he was looking after his father's uh, or his father-in-law's sheep there in the desert. Something incredibly special happened. A burning bush, <laughs> we've all heard of the burning bush experience. A bush was ablaze, but it wasn't going out. It kept burning and burning and burning. And he felt God calling him to this bush. So as he went to the bush, he has this conversation with the living God. It is amazing. It's worth going back and reading it in Exodus 3, if you have time. But God says to Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt. I want you to go and set my people free so that they may worship me. And, and uh, Moses says, well, if I go, who, who am I going to say he sent me? This is what God said to Moses. I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am a sent me to you. I am means Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord, the God Almighty. Yahweh is a word that is too holy for the Hebrew people to even use. Such a precious name, such an important name. If you follow in in in, in your own Bible, you will see whenever the Lord is in the capital letters, it is this word Yahweh, the great I am, the God who was, who is, and who always will be. You know, when uh, there's one psalm in the Bible that's uh, uh, given as Moses was the writer of it, is Psalm 90. And when I went to Albania, I used to be sitting on the lung bunker, we call it, overlooking the mountain range in Albania. Invariably, uh, Rich Welsh, the missionary there, would be with us. And we'd have some precious times. But I looked forward to opening up Psalm 90, and he would read this to us. And these are some of the words from it in verse 2. It says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the old world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. And he goes on to say, A thousand years in your or sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night. Moses had come to realise this God who always was and who always is and who always will be, the great I am, Jehovah God, the Almighty One. But Moses, although he'd now 
identified himself with the children of Israel and he'd come to understand more about God's identity. Uh, he still sometimes struggled with his own. When God called him, he says, well, who am I? And then he'd say, I am slow of speech and tongue. I'm no good with words. And that was before he even started on mission. When he went and when he uh, went to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. If you know the story, things got much worse before they got any better. And he said this, when Moses returned to the Lord and says, why, Lord, have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people and you have not rescued these people at all. You know, he, he struggled at times and be real. We can be real with God. He's talking to God here, explaining how he feels. But Moses persevered because he knew God. He knew something of God's identity. It wasn't enough for him to understand his own identity. He kept going because he saw his reward. When you meet with the eternal God, you see a glimpse of eternity. He says, by faith, he kept the Passover. Remember when they had to uh, kill a lamb and take the blood and sprinkle it on the doorposts so that when the angel came through the camp, he passed by and it's called the Passover. He passed over those houses. And it was a picture of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was coming to take away the sins of of the world and once they were through the Red Sea they were free listen to some of the things that they sang together it's a song that Moses and his sister Miriam brought about they said the Lord is my strength and my defense he has become my salvation uh, it says in the greatness of your majesty you threw down those who opposed you who among the gods is like you lord who is like you majestic in holiness awesome in glory working wonders in your unfailing love you will lead the people you have redeemed in your strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling the lord reigns forever and ever they were 40 years wandering around in the wilderness and he was leading a people who, who were complaining all the time, being faithless in their relationship with God. But Moses kept spending time discovering more of God's identity. And as he did, he was growing more into his own. His relationship with God was remarkable. Exodus 33, 11 says this, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. And when he carried a prayer in his heart, this was his prayer. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. And then we get this amazing moment where Moses says to God, but let me see your glory. Let me see your glory. And God agrees. OK, OK, if, if you come with me, there is a place near where you may stand on a rock. Exodus 33. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back. But my face must not be seen. And that's what happened. The glory of God passes by Moses. And it says in Exodus 34, verse 6, And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. So as he passes by, these words come flooding into uh, Moses. And, and for me, there's a question here. How can God forgive rebellion and sin and yet not leave the guilty unpunished? So he forgives, but he doesn't leave them unpunished. How can that be? Because of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world. Because he came and took my guilt. He came and took my sin upon his own shoulders. So what does this mean for us today? How can we use God's positioning system? Moses was no ordinary trial and you are not. God loves you.
You were special. When old enough, he made a decision. If you made a decision, a clear decision to follow Jesus. He chose disgrace instead of treasure. What have you chosen? What is the most important thing to you? He saw his reward. What are you looking forward to? You know, there was a number of times when Moses must have been tempted to turn off, to switch it off, the, God's GPS in his life. He could have stayed as a prince in Egypt. He could have settled down with his family in Midian. He could have given up and stayed as a slave in Egypt rather than having all the hassle. And he could have died unbelieving in the wilderness, fed up and miserable. But he didn't. He kept God's GPS in single. And today we can do that in our lives. We can escape our Egypt. We can move on from our Midian. And we continue to live in this COVID wilderness with hope in our hearts because we look forward to the promised land that God has promised us. But this means we have to receive Christ. We have to claim our true identity. This is what it says in John's gospel. When John was writing this, he said, he was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or of will but born of God you know Moses was a remarkable character uh, and he makes a live appearance in the New Testament thousands of years after he was here on earth there on the mountain with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration the disciples see him talking with Jesus See, people often say Moses didn't get to the promised land. They only saw it from a distance. I'd like to differ with that. He got there. He made it. Who was there on the mountain with Jesus? He really made it. And folk, if we hold on to the Lord, then we'll make it. We'll make it to be with Jesus fully. When heaven comes to earth in that new heaven and that new earth, we will make it. But today... We can tune into God. Have you received him? Have you believed in him? Have you welcomed him into your life? And if you have, well, don't die in the wilderness. In this COVID time, don't die there. You can still meet with God. Get your Bible open in the day. Start to pray. God will be with you. Know your identity, a child of God. Know his identity, the great almighty. And spend the rest of your life discovering this wonderful God who is ours. I'd like to pray a prayer for you to close it from St. Paul. He said this, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Moses' brother Aaron used to pray this for the people and it's the most beautiful prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations Brilliant, brilliant. So good. Thank you so much, Jen, for that. And it's been really good to hang out with you guys this morning. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget, you can hang out with us a little bit more now over on Zoom. It's still not too late. If you want the link and the password, message us, and we'll give you the details for that. And also remember, this week, you can catch up with all that's going on with Live and Hope over on our social media pages. 
message us also if you have any questions about what you've seen or heard today uh, on this service and we would love to talk to you about that um the last thing for me to do now apart from go inside and get a cup of tea whose idea was this to do this outside uh is to say have a blessed week everyone i hope you have a great one um thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time Oh, 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 oh,